Did you program these letters in? Mm -hmm. You thought you have to flash it in. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit enter on Z. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. What's it doing now? It's making holes. Mm -hmm. And you would have to actually press space. Okay. You would have Where's to, space there? I'm going to find it. Right, oh, right Just past A. Yeah, go ahead. You can press enter. Space, enter. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. You can press enter or space again. And, and it's feeding the paper through. Uh, let's see. Let's try doing a D. No, actually, um, to the paper is kind of moving up. So yeah, let's do so a couple more spaces. Enter, enter. Uh, yeah. One more. Oh, one more, please. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And you can go through. Okay, so now, what letter do I have here? Alright, that's D. I'm gonna try D. Go ahead. Shubham, what is it using to punch the dots in the paper? Yeah, it's... What is it actually doing there? Uh, it's the pin that we got. So there's actually one pin... Yeah. ...that is moving around. Now, why don't we have to, we have to calibrate it with a number of degrees for each, for each cell? Or is that just what you do initially? Yeah, that's what we, we have to do for the mother code. Oh, oh, I see, yeah. I see. This is all done. We're doing that one again. Should we space it out? Uh, yeah, let's space it. You could try yeah. making that letter again. Yeah. Let's try E. Is that okay? Okay, yeah. Go for it. So that's the E. Yep. You feel it? Yeah, and it's, it's a little bit faint, so it could be much crisper than that. But mm, that, yes. that is perfect. That is a Braille E. Mm -hmm. You have exacted the spacing for Braille E. Yeah, sorry if it's a little faint. We, oh, we, no, could, no, no, we no. could try to make uh, the paper a little... Yeah, this yeah so this is um, this is absolutely fascinating, mm -hmm. uh, Shubham. Great. What you've done here is uh, extraordinarily impressive um, and really demonstrates uh, what what is possible mm -hmm. if you think outside the box and don't just do a simple, you know, standard run-of-the-mill science experiment that's been done you know, 10,000 times, like, can you taste the difference between Coke and Pepsi? Right. Um, what you have here is a device that can be used by anyone, really, mm -hmm. uh, but mainly by parents to show their children how to read Braille. And the beauty of it is, and the true excitement of it is, they don't actually need to know Braille themselves to use such a device. Um, that is what is truly fantastic about it and that's why I think it could be um, a great way to really sell the, the technology and to promote the technology mm -hmm. as, a, as a device for parents or for blind people to label uh, mm -hmm. things so I'm a I, I'll just say this you know so that we're, we, we can document it um, I'm a, a totally blind uh, computational chemist about a year and a half away from my PhD so I've, I've done a lot of stuff with technology and I'll tell you, and I have used a lot of accessible technology, this is by far the most innovative because you've developed a three-dimensionary, uh, you know, a printer that moves around, a braille printer, a braille embosser that prints on a, on a nice roll of uh, basically receipt paper and using simply a, a Lego kit and a couple of parts from Home Depot that, that are very inexpensive. And the design here is absolutely brilliant. and shows your innovation and the fact that you're 12 years old putting this thing out for the public to use is absolutely remarkable. Thank you.